This video, I'm going to be sharing with you three manifestation routines or rituals that totally transform my life. I'm going to share with you ways that you can apply it as well so that you can change your life in a powerful way if you choose. Welcome back to another video. My name is Aaron and I help people expand their consciousness. Now in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you those three manifestation rituals that have totally changed my life, things that I do every single day that has allowed me to create much more of a reflection of what I want in my life. Now another thing I'll be doing is in every single new video that I do, what I'll be doing is a little meditation at the end that wires in these ideas. And this particular meditation we're going to do is going to be very powerful for increasing the electromagnetic energy of our heart, which is part of the process of my routines slash rituals. So first off, let me say that for manifestation in general, one of the things I've really been focused on recently more so than ever is less of the intellectual ideas, less of, oh, this equals this equals this. And if I get myself to make a little tweak in my mind, then this will happen. Everything in life is a reflection of the internal state of being and state of being has more to do with that of emotion than that of the intellect, than that of the ideas. Now, sometimes the intellect can allow us to let go of certain things that maybe hold us back, maybe limiting beliefs that we have. We learn, we become aware of some of the beliefs we have. And when we start to let those go, we do feel like there's a lot of weight that's taken off of our back, but in general, I've been learning and feeling that it's more about the feeling. It's more about can I just feel the emotions that I want in the present moment regardless of if I already have a reflection of my life. And this is kind of like the old school Abraham Hicks philosophy, but I'm finding that it does work and it works very powerfully and it works in a way to where it's less about trying and needing to take and do so much. It's more so about allowing than anything else. You know, back in the day, and by back in the day, I mean just like maybe even like five, six months ago, uh, I was just about taking a lot of action. And I'm not going to lie, I still take a lot of action. I love taking action. And a lot of what I do is in alignment with that. So therefore, I continue to do it. But this is the thing. It's I'm much more aware of my state of being. So if I start to feel frustrated with something, I'm able to, in a way, revert it back to that of what I want. And it's a lot easier for me to then just enjoy the process as well. The more we enjoy the process, the easier the process is and the more and the quicker a lot of times things happen anyway. So the first one I'm going to be talking about has to do with understanding intention. So setting intentions and linking up emotion with that. So every single day and especially the last two weeks I've been doing this, I've been doing this loosely for about a year now, I would say. What I do is I have a certain way that I get things done. So I go to bed. What I do is I wake up in the morning and before I go to bed at night, I set the intention that the next day I'm going to get a whole bunch of work done and I know exactly what I'm going to get done. So for example, I film a video every single day. I film two videos a day, one for the courses that I create and one for YouTube. And what I do is I always do the YouTube one first. And I always make sure that I have the exact title, the exact everything. I don't script out any of my videos. I just know exactly that I'm going to be, um, what I'm going to be talking about. So just the title itself. Then what I do is I get in front of the camera and I just go. But I do that before I go to bed so that I prime myself. And what I do is I set the intention that when I wake up in the morning, it's very easy for me to go through and get into the flow state. It's very easy for me to get and take a cold shower so that I feel very in, in vivid and alive when I do the videos. I make the intention that when I go to the gym, I have an amazing workout, that I feel amazing in my meditations. All of these things I set the intentions for even the day before. And then what I do is as I go through them the next day, I focus on being present to the moment, but at the same time, I set intentions before everything. So before I made this video, I set the intention that I created a video from the flow state, that this video is able to impact people in a powerful way. I set that intention before I even got into this meditation or into this, uh, this uh, video, which I'll have a meditation anyways. So. That was something that I always do. It works like magic. I was talking to my buddy Victor Odo the other day about it, and he's doing it a lot too. It's something that he's been doing, especially more recently. He's been setting intentions for his day. He like will literally visualize himself 
the night before, going through certain things, getting certain things done. You know, there's certain things that we're having done because we're teaming up to do a couple of projects together. He's like, okay, I'm gonna do this, this, and this. And I'm already setting the intention so that tomorrow it's already done. Like it just happens, it just flows. This works very powerfully. This is something that could also be called what is uh, loosely called segment intending. Segment intending with Abraham Hicks. Segment intending has to do with setting the attentions before certain segments, little parts of our day. So the segment of me making a video right now, there'll be a segment of me editing this video and a little bit afterwards. There'll be a segment of me driving to the gym. I can set the intention that I drive safely. All of these things add up and this is the cool thing. Think of it like there's an electromagnetic energy around your body. That electromagnetic energy around your body is full of the emotions, the thoughts, the actions you're taking. There's a momentum there. And when you set intentions into your energy field and then you walk out into the world, you link up with certain probabilities that vibrate with your energy field. And if you want to understand more about this, check out HeartMath Institute. HeartMath Institute has shown the electromagnetic energy of the heart, how the energy field goes much further beyond the body. And that's what I believe is that in general, there's a certain momentum to our energy field. And what happens is when I set intentions, I'm starting to build the momentum in my field to where even tomorrow, as I go into a video, some of the momentum from the day before is picked up. So it's almost like it gets easier and easier. The most effort is given off in the very beginning when going from zero to one, when not doing it to doing it. Once you do it, it gets easier and easier and easier. That's why a lot of the benefits of meditation comes from the momentum of doing it, not just the one time of doing it or like the three or four days in a row of doing it, but doing it for 30 days in a row, 60 days in a row, every single day. I'm not saying this to brag or anything or to like make me seem special, but I've been meditating since 2012 every single day for about 15 to 20 minutes in the morning and 15 to 20 minutes at night every single day. And it has profoundly changed my life because I'm able to build on that momentum, get to this clear feeling inside of my heart and you feel this, this feeling of clarity and just observing my own thoughts so that I know that I don't have to react to them. It's something I think you can easily do as well, just by observing your thoughts and seeing them from more of a neutral point of view. So intention, setting the intention is just so powerful. The more that I set intentions is the more that I really see how powerful it is and how powerful it can be in the long term, the macro. So the second manifestation ritual that has changed my life has to do with something that's called the wave of success. Now this is a reality transurfing idea. Some of you know I have a reality transurfing academy. That's where I teach a lot of the advanced manifestation techniques. I do meditations and all of those videos as well. I'll go ahead and link it below if you guys are interested in it. But nonetheless, it's a powerful uh, understanding, a way, a new philosophy for going about manifesting what you want. I've shared some ideas from there before, like decreasing importance. When we decrease the level of importance to something, we let go of resistance and then we actually can allow it into our life. So this is a little bit new idea because a lot of times it's more about desire and you know we put our goals on a pedestal out of habit. But this is more so about seeing things as natural for us to accomplish. And part of that of reality transurfing is understanding this idea of what is called the wave of success. So the wave of success is knowing that in every moment, things in our life are fundamentally neutral. We give them meanings as to what things mean, and there's certain states of being that we derive from certain meanings. So the wave of success is where, say you're going throughout your day, and then something happens, and if you give it a positive meaning, and you start to milk the feeling, then you can increase your state of being more, and then you're on that wave of success and then you could do it again and you just keep doing it until you increase your state of being more and more and more. So let me give you some examples as to how this works. Now you don't want to be externally motivated like you need something on the outside to happen for you to feel good, but you can milk the feeling of the gratitude you have for certain experiences. So for example, the way you might use the, the wave of success you are going to the gym and you set the intention that you have a great workout at the gym, that you feel connected to the people that maybe you see regularly. I go to the same gym every day. So a lot of times I'll see a lot of the same trainers, a lot of the same people. I've been going there for about four or five years now. And there's just certain people I see. And I always set the intention that I have a good gym workout, that I see people, I smile, you know, I connect with people. And when I go into the gym, say someone holds the door open for me. Normally they just hold the door open for me. It's like, it's whatever, right? 
But what I could do is I could say, I'm grateful. Thank you. You know, I say thank you to the person. And then afterwards, I'm not like giving it excess meaning or excess importance. But what I do is I just feel grateful that somebody opened the door for me. I kind of milk that vibration, that feeling a little bit more than normal. Nothing crazy. But then what I do is I go greet the person at the front. They scan my card. I go walk in. Someone else says hi to me. I feel grateful for that. I look for reasons and I look for things to focus on to feel that gratitude and it'll keep increasing my state of being and that creates momentum. So a lot of times when they talk about wave of success in general, think of a wave of success like, for example, um, even YouTube, right? Even this YouTube channel, for example, a wave of success is putting out videos. I put out videos with the intention of helping people, with helping people understand more about who they are. Now I'm even adding in meditation because I think meditation is a powerful way to change consciousness and a powerful way to wire in the ideas of what we learn. So I set that intention and what happens is, is then I set out the intention, I put out the videos, I put out the content, I see how it affects people. So I see people responding in messages and stuff, saying nice things or comments. And once again, I'm not externally motivated. Like I'm not, I don't need those in order for me to keep doing what I'm doing because I love what I do. But when I see it, I feel grateful for it. I feel happy for it. And what happens is, is then as there's growth that happens, there's almost like because I'm focusing on more and more in the gratitude for being able to reach people and all of these things, it continues to grow on itself because of the focus. Whereas sometimes people focus on the opposite of a wave of success because they focus on what they don't have. They focus on maybe certain things happening to where um, the, it takes away their growth or it's just not happening as quickly as it used to. What happens in that case is the focus causes more of that emotion to go down and then with that comes a reflection in life of that reality. So it's either you can focus on the abundance or you can focus on the scarcity and whatever you focus on, you will get more of because focus equals feeling and the feeling, the state of being, everything on the outside is a reflection of that internal state of being. So that's something also I found very powerful. Start to see, feel grateful for what's already in your life. Start to see and know that everything is connected. The moment you decide that something is a block, the moment you decide that something's gonna keep you from getting what you want, the moment you make that in a way that meaning, then is the moment you start to experience that. But if you see every failure as a way for you to come back stronger, every failure as a way for you to really redefine what you want out of life and who you are, then what happens is you start to gain your power back. You start to realize that you aren't a leaf in the wind that's really vulnerable to the way that everything is going. You can set the direction, you can set the intention and things change based on the meaning you give it. So there's always learning to be done and if you choose to integrate it into your life experience, I think you'll find that things happen in a very powerful way. Now, the third manifestation ritual has to do with something that I've been doing for about the last four or five weeks, about a little over a month most likely. And it's something I've been doing in live meditations. It's something I've been doing in almost every meditation that I do. And it has to do with connecting to the heart. It has to do with something the Heart Math Institute has called the freeze frame technique. Now the Heart Math Institute, first off is in California, has to do with understanding the electromagnetic energy of the heart. The electromagnetic energy of the heart is thousands of times more powerful than that of the head. This is why also I've been less focused on the intellectual ideas and more focused on how I can body the emotions because I realized that the more I connect to my heart as well as the more I get straight to the emotion anyways of what I want to manifest. So if I want to create something in my life specifically and it brings a certain emotion within me, I could go and try to make that happen or I can allow and I can focus on the emotion that already exists within me. I could grow that energy field around my body and then things happen as a reflection anyways. So I go straight to the feeling. Now part of that they've shown with the Heart Mass Institute, there's a lot of proof of this. There's a lot of science. You can look it up if you're interested, but just the, how powerful the heart is and how, when we create from the heart, this is something I've also come to learn. So this isn't something that maybe heart math Institute has shown, but, or maybe they have, I'm not even sure. But when we create from the head, we're creating from duality. We're creating from a left brain, right brain perspective. And a lot of times there's the good, there's the bad, there's the labels, there's the identity, there's all of these things. So we give off the polarization of the opposite happening. When we create from the heart, the heart is more single focused. The heart is more connected to the core essence of who we are, more connected to our soul. And I believe that when we create from the heart, we create less potential for polarization. We create less of the good and the bad. We create more of just the who we are. So that's kind of why I think also that creating from the heart can be so powerful. But nonetheless, what I found is 
they've shown that what they have shown is that with research that the more we focus in on our heart center, the more we grow this electromagnetic energy of our heart and that it's something that people can feel when you are in a good state of being, I don't want to use the word good, but when you're in a positive state of being and you're feeling charged, what happens is, is the energy you have is emitting out of you. It's literally inside of your heart and it's expanding out. When you feel stressed, when you feel like the things are happening to you, you feel stressed, you're, you're not clear, or you're like walking around and you're just feeling like, um, you're just not feeling vital with energy. A lot of times that could be because rather than you emanating out, your energy field is grabbing energy around it. So it's almost like you can either give off energy or you can almost in a way try to take energy subconsciously. Now that's something that's from the book called Supernatural, Becoming Supernatural by Dr. Joe Dispenza. And I found it very interesting because it's like you can emit energy out based on certain practices you do, like feeling inside of your heart center. Even if you right now just put your hands over your heart, we're going to do a meditation here in a minute, but put your hands over your heart just to maybe feel it and you let me know what you think. Put your hands over your heart and even though you may feel the warmth from your hands, pay attention to your heart center. And as you pay attention to your heart center, immediately what you start to do is you start to bring the awareness from out of the head, out of maybe the overthinking and into the body. And when you are in the body, when you are in the heart center, you could start to feel your heart swell up a little bit. And this is where things can really get interesting because then you can start to focus on your goals and you see that visualization, what we hear about visualization, the main part of visualization is not so that when you are thinking of the things that you want, that you actually get what you are thinking about. It's more so can you think about what you want and in doing so you increase the feeling inside of your body and that feeling brings more of what you want into your life. So instead of visualization being a means to get some end, make visualization an end of just feeling. I'm feeling the way I want and that's what I want to create more of. That's what I want to resonate with. So in the same way, put the hands over your heart and you start to feel more inside of your heart center. And when you go out into the world after this, you'll feel differently. You will feel more connected to the people you talk to. You'll feel more connected to yourself. Your heart has an intelligence. They've actually proven that there are a type of neurons that are in the heart that communicate with the brain. So there are ways that our brain and our heart, our heart also has a intelligence. And when we connect to that heart and we speak from that heart and we live from that heart, we create amazing things in our life because the heart is electromagnetically thousands of times more powerful than the head itself. So what I'd like to do with you right now, and let me let you know as well, this is called the freeze frame technique from the Heart Math Institute. This is something you can use anytime you're feeling negative emotion. I found that I've kind of uh, enjoyed making this a visualization in itself. So even if I'm not necessarily feeling negative emotion, which if I do and I feel frustrated or something, I will definitely do this. But if I just want to use this in a powerful way to create what I want in my life, I will use the freeze frame technique to wire in a memory into my body, into my heart, and for me to increase my state of being. It works either way. So what I'd like to ask you to do right now is what you can do is you can do one of two things in this meditation exercise that I think can be very powerful. The first one is what you can do is you can either imagine a memory you want to let go of. You can imagine um, something that you don't want to experience. And what I, in order to do that, think of a memory that you have of something that you prefer. Think of a memory that you have that you felt an emotion that you want to feel again. So for me, so this was one of mine is I used to debate in high school. And I went to a tournament, I won first place for one of the tournaments. Every month there was a tournament. I uh, went four rounds and I ended up placing first place for that. And when I did, anyone that won first place at these ceremonies at the end of the night, they got like a little trophy, I still have that trophy. Uh, the, everyone in the crowd stands up for the person that wins first place. So it was like a standing ovation. There was a certain feeling with that because it was an accomplishment because I used to be afraid of public speaking and now I kind of do it for a living or at least I do it on YouTube and uh, will eventually be doing a lot more public speaking. So it's kind of a paradox, but nonetheless, for me, that was a moment in my life where I felt very, uh, I felt very accomplished. I felt very like I had a fear, I pushed through it and look what happened. And it felt very good. And that for me is one of my memories. So when I'm doing my heart, when I'm doing this freeze frame technique, I can overlay that memory and I start to feel that emotion inside of my heart. Maybe there's something similar for you. Maybe it's just you with a significant other walking along the beach 
Maybe it's you with your family feeling, you know, having an amazing experience together. Whatever it is, think of a memory that you're going to use. Or the second part of this is you can think of a visualization of something you want to experience in your life that when you think of it, that you feel into it. So it could be, for example, for me, that would be me traveling the world and speaking in front of a lot of people, sharing ideas, connecting with people all around the world. That's my visualization and that I can kind of put into a snapshot. Now, here's a couple key things for it. When you do this, imagine it as if you're looking through your own eyes. So versus you maybe seeing it as if you're in a movie and you see yourself doing these things, imagine it as if you're looking through it. And another thing is focus more on the feeling than anything else. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first off do and go through this freeze frame technique. And what I'd like to ask you to do is to take in a couple deep breaths in with me. And we're gonna do this and then put the awareness into the heart. So I'm gonna go ahead and cue the music right now. I just wanna take a deep breath in, a deep breath out. As you breathe out, feel your body relax more and more. What I'd like to ask you to do is put your hands over your heart and to feel the energy inside of your heart, to feel the warmth from your hands, and to know that the more you put the awareness into your heart, the more you are growing the electromagnetic energy around your body. So feel that energy inside of your heart. Let's take another deep breath in, another deep breath out. What I'd like to ask you to do now is to close your eyes if you can. Take a deep breath in. Breathe it out and feel your body relax more and more. And with every breath you take, you can feel your body relax. You can feel the energy in your heart growing more and more with every breath that you take. What I'd like to ask you to do now is to focus in on your heart center and to feel that energy. Now that we've been focusing on it for just a couple seconds, we've already grown the electromagnetic energy around our body. This electromagnetic energy around our body is so powerful. As we change how we feel, we are changing what we experience in our life. Now imagine either the memory or the visualization of what you want to experience in your life and imagine it as if you're looking through your own eyes. Imagine some type of experience that would represent that to you. Focus on it with your feeling, with your sight, with your hearing, whatever modality, all of them included, whatever you want. Imagine what it would be like to experience that again or to experience that new memory or that new manifestation that you desire. Imagine it. you can see in this memory or visualization pay attention to the colors what colors do you see what is in your environment pay attention to how people respond to you Imagine the colors around you becoming brighter and brighter, much more vivid. You feel like everything is HD, very crisp as you look around. And put your awareness on what you can hear in this experience. What kind of sounds are around you?
Now imagine those sounds becoming louder and louder. What temperature is the air? Most importantly, what does it feel like inside of your heart to be in this experience? Put the awareness on your heart center and feel it. Imagine that there is a ball of energy in your heart center whatever color you like and imagine that this ball of energy is spinning faster and faster and as it spins faster you can feel the energy in your heart grow more and more this feeling in your heart is who you really are Now your heart has an intelligence. Now ask your heart, is there any message that your heart has for you? What does your heart want you to know right now? ball of energy around your heart spinning faster and faster and as it spins faster you can feel it grow you can feel the warmth from it you can feel the love and now set the intention that throughout the rest of the day today you feel this emotion whenever you choose whenever you remember this exercise you can feel this love inside your heart whenever you want just by focusing on this experience, just by focusing in your heart. Now, as you go throughout your day today, feel this emotion more and more because this feeling is the anchor that will allow you to manifest what you want. And anytime you remember this, you can feel into that emotion and that emotion will cause a momentum of energy for you to create what you want. Now, simply know that going forward, you have changed. You have just changed the electromagnetic energy of your body. It is now much further beyond, much further around your energy field than you could possibly imagine. And people are going to respond to you in a completely new way today. Set the intention that you see or experience something in your life that proves that you have changed. And as you go out throughout your day to day, feel into the heart center more than you ever have before. And this will profoundly change your life. It has the potential to. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, feel free to like it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that little notification here so that you can see the daily vids. And other than that, if you like these kind of meditations at the end of the videos, let me know in the comments below because I will continue to do so if you do. So other than that, as always, peace, much love, and namaste.